not on four of the room. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of Griffin City Board of Commissioners, April 13, 2021. We're going to open with Commissioner Brock leading the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and with Commissioner Truman Sinsley III leading the invocation. Go please rise. Right, please. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're here today to ask for your blessings and guidance in the performance of our duties to select officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interests of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you all for being here tonight. Welcome. So I believe Commissioner Flowers is on, on Zoom tonight. Can you hear us tonight okay, Ms. Flowers? Yes, I'm here. I'm here as well. Okay. Commissioner McCord and Commissioner Flowers will be um, following this online. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. First item is the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Mr. Murray, second by Mr. Brock. All in favor, please signal by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. Aye. 7-0. Moving into presentations and delegations, we're going to recognize Faith Palmer, Building Plans Coordinator from Planning and Development as the March 2021 Strongest Link Award recipient. Planning Development Director Chad Jacobs will address. And this will be a video, I believe. Yes. Uh, Ms. Faith is also here as well, so I'm very happy to, to present for you all. Uh, so Ms. Faith has been working with us for about six months now and is doing a fabulous job. And so I'm very proud to that she has been awarded the uh, strongest link of the chain for uh, the month of March. Uh, so I was very happy to nominate her. Uh, we have done a, uh, a video uh, presentation as well, and that was actually a lot of fun to do. So Faith enjoys uh, doing stuff in front of the camera. It was a lot of fun. So, um, but and with that, I guess we can uh, present the video. She's doing a, a wonderful job. I can't, I cannot speak kindly enough of what Faith is doing. She started with us at a very, very busy time and is picking things up very, very quickly. Um, so it's, uh, it's just pure pleasure to work with her. So let's listen to the video and then we'll give you a round of applause. <laughs> Uh, Faith is extremely deserving of this. Uh, Faith started with us uh, about six months ago. Uh, and she started at a time when the city had been quite possibly as busy as in terms of uh, building permits and plan reviews and things of that nature. Uh, she handles all the, uh, she's the building plans coordinator, so she handles all of that information. When somebody pulls a permit for a house, uh, they're not just pulling one permit uh, to build a new house, they're also pulling the permits for subs as well. Uh, in the calendar year for 2020, we did 185 new housing starts. So Faith had a lot of permits to process, and she's doing all of this at a time during the pandemic. Uh, uh, contractors want their permits, you know, almost like the next day, uh, and she does. It's a very stressful environment, and the thing that's awesome about Faith is she always does her job with a smile. I've never seen Faith without a smile. Uh, she always asks great questions. Uh, I hope I give good answers to those questions. Uh, even if I'm frustrated, I never know because she always goes to sleep. So she's a pure pleasure. Well, my name is Faith, and I'm the Building Plans Coordinator for the Department of Planning and Development for the City of Brickman. I've been here about six months, and I'm the strongest link for the month of March. Definitely surprised, but honored, and for me to not have been here for very long to know that I'm not only making my director proud, that I'm also making a positive impact in my community and just being recognized, it definitely feels good and appreciated. So I'm honored that I'm thankful and I love serving my community. Yes, I don't like I don't even post it on social media. 
put the red light back in the bin. Just because she doesn't want you to, you gotta keep working at it somehow. That, that's why she's the strongest thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the she just does her job. Yeah, that's me. Like, we've got zero complaints. You know what I'm saying? Like, she no, just smiling. does her job and just smiles. Well, so, only from you, Brian. I'm about you all the time. But I mean, okay. <laughs> thank you, Faith. Your smile is amazing. If you smile, the world smiles with you. We're blessed to have you on step on the team, and I hear nothing but praise from the contractors that would deal directly with you. God bless you and many, many years to come. Item two is a presentation by a proclamation declaring April 12, 2021 as Griffin Lineman Appreciation Day and April 2021 as Griffin Lineman Appreciation Month. Commissioner Cynthia Reed Ward will present the presentation. So if the team wants to come forward and I personally just want to tell each of you thank you for your hard work and commitment. <laughs> I know this past couple weeks ago, y'all were working hard over in Newton and helping our, our sister city over there. And we had a, multiple outages in the Griffin and y'all came running back and worked all night. And y'all are just a testament of dedication and we're very proud of you and appreciate your service. So, Commissioner Ward. Okay. Proclamation, Griffin Lyman Appreciation Day. Whereas the city of Griffin and Griffin Power recognize the efforts of Lyman in keeping the power on regardless of conditions and protecting public safety. And whereas the Lyman is a, a tradesman who works hard to construct and maintain energy infrastructure <coughs> and the profession of Lyman is steep in personnel, family and professional tradition for these true public servants. And whereas Lyman are often first responders during storms and other catastrophic events, working to make the safe, the same safe for other public safety heroes. They work every day in potentially hazardous conditions, often in extreme weather, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, to keep the power flowing for the rest of us. And whereas, linemen work in dangerous situations with thousands of volts of electricity, high atop power lines, away from their own families to construct and maintain the energy infrastructure of this city, this state, and often as backup to out-of-state locations in need. And whereas, Lyman put their lives on the line literally every day with little fa fanfare or recognition from the community regarding the inherent danger to their work. So since April 18, 2012, chosen in memory of Cliff Bosch, who was a celebrated lineman who passed away on April 18, 1992. Georgia Lyman Appreciation Day has been commemorated as a day of honor. All of those who so unselfishly serve on a daily basis. And whereas multiple organizations throughout the state, including Georgia EMCs, Electric Citizens of Georgia, MEAG, and Georgia Power, are coming together to ensure that linemen of Georgia are recognized for, the effect, for their effective and dedicated service to the citizen, citizens of this state. And whereas recognizing that the state of Georgia has designated April 12th, 2021 as Georgia Lyman Appreciation Day and the month of April 2021 as National and State Lyman Appreciation Month, it is most fitting and proper that the Lyman of Griffin Power be recognized for their effective, steadfast, and dedicated service to all the citizens of the city of Griffin, Georgia. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Griffin Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 12, 2021 as Griffin Lyman Appreciation Day, and April, 20, April 2021 as Griffin Lyman Appreciation Month in the city of Griffin, Georgia, and urge all citizens to pause to reflect on their contributions and to thank any lineman you see, whether you see them working near your home, at a local restaurant, church, or school event, for their commitment and dedication to keeping the power on for everyone. We do hereby declare that a copy of this proclamation 
be spread upon the minutes of this board reflecting that I here too, I have here to, unto caused the seal of the city of Griffith to be affixed on this, the 12th day of April, in the year of our Lord, 2021. Doug S. Holbert, Mayor, Jessica W. O'Connor, City Manager. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, these guys make my job easy, and I say that a lot because you truly have to be passionate about what you do to go out in the elements and the and the terrible conditions that they go out in a lot of times. And I've gotten so many compliments. Um, through this last storm and, and just daily, I got a letter from Newton Utilities just today thanking them for their service, for going out and helping them get their power restored from that devastating storm that they just had. Um, and the guys that worked that storm, they came in at 7.30 on Friday morning, 7 o'clock, 7.30 on Friday morning, worked all the way through because we had a storm of our own that Sunday. So they just kept on trucking. So. They're, they're just great, wonderful guys. They love what they do. They never, I never have to ask twice for anything. I mean, it's just Johnny on the spot. So um, I appreciate them very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, picture. Pixar, sorry. No. Oh, I guess. Adam, wherever you want to sit. All right, you ready? Can't sit here. Yeah. <laughs> One way or the other. There you go. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you all. Go, gang. Thank you. Item <laughs> three is a special presentation of environmental stewardship awards to co co corporate recipients Bridgestone Band Ag and individual recipient Lisa Henderson, Griffin Environmental Council Chairman Jason Chance will address. And I think you have a few friends with you as well, Jason. I believe there's several other environmental council members here if you guys want to come up and give these away too. I don't want to steal all of it. Just want to um, this is our first annual uh, environmental stewardship board for um, individuals and companies that have gone above and beyond to help protect the environment of Griffin, keep Griffin clean and green, help monitor water quality and educational efforts to uh, teach our youth about the environment. Um, we have an individual and a corporate award. The first award I want to give away is the individual one to Ms. Lisa Henderson. Um, this award is in recognition of her commitment to environmental education and her active participation with Georgia Adopt a Stream program. And our second award is for Bridgestone Bandag. Uh, they took it upon themselves to start cleaning up their uh, industrial park and picking up trash and necessitated us to create an adopt a street program for them. <clears throat> and so we would like to recognize them for their efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I get, let's, let's grab a picture with everybody. All right. I know Gibbs. Yeah. Oh, there's Gibbs. Yeah. Gibbs, a member of the Environmental Council. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And th this will become an annual award. We're going to open up nominations to the public um, toward the end of the year. So we'll give it away every month on April 1st. That sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Today I've had the privilege of speaking to Atkinson Elementary School, Dr. Real's fifth grade group, and they were talking about how can they get involved. So I was sharing about how Brigstone, Bandag, and others doing the Adopt a Stream. So they're going to actually reach out to the Environmental Council about adopting a stream. Um, they're at the Cabin Creek Basin as well as the um, area of Lincoln Road, um, Atkinson. So Dr. Real should have Weiss Martin's contact information and he'll. Hopefully, we bring you all a presentation to jump on board to get a thank you for your commitment and service to Griffin. Thank you to the recipients of the, the awards. So, here's our favorite part of every month 
It's review financial reports for February 2021. Chief Financial Officer Marcus Schwab will address. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor. Good, good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. All right, so y'all have the financial documents and the cash report, the revenues and expenses. This is through through February. And I know last month there was a question about additional property tax collections. So you can see that we we're about 94.65% for the general fund collections. And as of today, this morning, I do not see anything additional posting for March just yet. Check may be in the mail. So any questions or comments? Good job. Officer. Thank you for your team. We look forward to hearing the budget hearings in the next month or so. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Moving into citizen comments. At this time, the mayor opens the floors to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. The mayor reserves the right to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left side who would like to come before the board? Anyone? Welcome. Will you please state your name and address for the record? Okay. Dr. Ishana Jones, 1689 Summerwood Circle, Georgia. Welcome. Okay. I'm coming back again to speak, and I'll take this now. Coming back again to speak about the affordable housing development. Uh, of course, with the last meeting that was had, I'm trying to make sure that this board remembers that they serve the citizens of Griffin. And to that, to saying to that effect, uh, this last meeting did not feel like that was the case. Uh, I want to make sure that we have a city commission and a county commission and not two county commissions. Okay. Um, I also have a diverse coalition of citizens here that will speak after me, so I will not be long, I'll be brief. But I just want to remind you, uh, again, what you committed to in the comprehensive plan, what you committed to when you decided to run for office and were elected by the citizens of Griffin, Georgia. And I also want to remind you that one of the overall goals for this board was affordable and attainable housing for the citizens in Griffin, Georgia. I want to make sure that is clear. Um, we, the community, expect that this decision for the meeting on April 27th will be a unanimous decision because it is a no-brainer. Okay. And those are all the remarks that I have, and there are other coalition members that will be speaking as well. Thank you, Dr. Jones. On my left, please come forward. State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Donald Driver, 534 Moore Street, Griffin, Georgia, retired, part of Dr. Jones' committee. She spoke on the matters of what concern you. I want to speak on the matter of affordability. When I was coming up, the only way that I can afford a house, unless I went and bought a Jim Walters home, use my VA loan, or go buy a house from somebody else. But with these affordable houses coming through here, because people, some people don't make over $40,000 a year. And you, they need the opportunity to just like those folks that have $100,000 a year job. So we're petitioning you guys to look at the facts about the affordability that we are asking you to do because we need this. You wouldn't want to live in a Jim Walters home or a trailer, but you would like to have affordable housing. And that's what we're asking you guys to do. Think about the people that you serve. Those are the most important, regardless of what organization come to you or what. The fact is that each community is supposed to make affordable housing to their citizens. And if the area, that what we're concerned about has some complication with some other people, then we are looking at the affordable housing for that area. Thank you, Mr. Holbrook and your city commission. Thank you so much, Mr. Good. Robert. Mm -hmm. On my left. Yes, sir. Name and address for record, please. Kim Williams, 502 South 6th Street. Go ahead. Uh, 
How many of your starting police officers could afford a house? This is housing for them. How many of your starting EMTs could afford a house here? These house, this house is for them. It's for probably 80% of the people you employ in this city. Teachers, people who work and live here. The starting salaries are what, 32, 40? This is how they get a home, start a community, and live, work, and play here. Isn't that the whole motto, live, work, play? You can't live here if you can't afford the house. And if the jobs even you guys are offering can't afford them a house, how are they gonna live here? How are they gonna work here? How are they gonna play here? This is the reality of the situation, is we need houses people can actually live in. So keep that in mind. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Yes, sir. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Morris Colby, 100 Cali Road, Griffin, Georgia. I came to speak on affordable, affordable housing development. I want to touch on three things, options for citizens to move out of molded and infested apartment buildings and slum houses owned by slum lords. Two, creating an environment of happiness for our citizens to be proud to call home. Three, I would love to see the people who aren't affected by not having affordable housing care as much as the ones who are affected. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Email to my left. Good evening. Name and address for the record, please, sir. My name is Stanley Atkins II. My address is 200 Pepper Tree, Griffin, Georgia. I've been following this online and watching a lot of the meetings. And at the beginning of this meeting, once it was started, you said a prayer. And the words of your prayer, you asked for guidance, you asked for wisdom, you asked for the ability to make the right decisions on the behalf of the citizens that you serve. Well, your prayers have been answered because you now sit with the opportunity to do something for your citizens that has not been done in decades. The fact that we're holding this conversation in 2021 is embarrassing. When you look at other counties and flourishing communities, it's obvious that economically the housing market is rebounding everywhere but Griffin. Outside the Griffin area, many people view Griffin as a stain on the fabric of Georgia. We can make it a hallmark by one, creating affordable housing. I'm a retired firefighter paramedic. When I started out, it was $32,500 a year. That means that I would have qualified for that affordable housing. Police officers, just as she stated, some of your linesmen, some of the interns and apprenticeships that are graduating from Griffin to uh, Southern Crescent. These are some of the people that you want to enter the workforce in Griffin, Georgia, but you don't want to give them an affordable place to live. You can ride through some of these impoverished neighborhoods in our community, and it's a bigger issue than just housing. This, as you stated, with the mold, the mildew, this ties into social equity, this ties into health equity for your citizens. If a person lives in a rundown, dilapidated residence, that's one, creates mental illness. Two, they lose a sense of hope. And when they don't have grass in their front yard, there's broken bottles, and when they feel a draft blowing in, that's from crappy construction. We now have time and we have the ability to completely change and rebuild the infrastructure of Griffin, Georgia. And it is up to you to do it. And from this point where we currently sit, the only reason that I would see that this would be negated is for personal reasons, whether it's by influence of corporations or citizens that may have positions of control. So again, you prayed in this meeting to ask for guidance, wisdom, and for the power to make the right and just decisions. And again, Mr. Tinsley, your prayers, your prayers have been answered. Now, have they been answered? It's up to you to fulfill these obligations. Thank you. Anybody else on my left side like to come before the board? Anybody on my left? Anybody in the center want to come before the board? Anybody on my right side like to come before the board? Last call. Is there anybody online or any comments you need read into the record? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Please come forward. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Pamela Jones, 2090 Haven Chapel Road. I've been following this as well, and I am a bit disconcerted at the fact that uh, there is not, as has been stated when we think of Pledge of Allegiance, there's not one nation 
under God. It's so unfortunate because those of us who have not, which I am one of those with a beautiful couple of boys here with me, we don't have a home to call our own. We don't have anything, we can't get it. Um, affordable housing will help us. I've tried, we've tried. I don't think it's fair, I don't think it's just. And I would love for you all to look at that and make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience? Yes, sir. Name and address, please, for the record. Michael Sutton, uh, 2090 Haven Chapel Road. Uh, I'm one of the sons of Miss Pam Jones, and um, I haven't been following this at all. I've just been listening, and uh, I feel like I'm very well spoken and well educated enough to speak upon it. Uh, a lot of people look at me and give me a lot of side eyes. So they look at me like, why is it this young man in his own house? Why can't he provide for himself? Why is he living with his mom? I look at a lot of people with the income to do those things. And I wanted the same thing myself. So what I'm trying to figure out is why can't someone like me who works I'm just going to be honest, twice or three times is harder than a lot of my peers, and I'm just going to use the word a lot of my Caucasian peers. Why can't I afford the same housing that they afford if I work twice or as hard as they do, three times as hard as they do for a fraction of the paper? Thank you very much, sir. Anybody else in the audience like to come for the board? <coughs> Do we have any um, letters or emails that were sent in? Yes, and here we do have three. Um, the first is from Doreen Kendrick at 195 Lenox Circle at Griffin. So the city commissioners of Griffin, Georgia, I respectfully request that you vote no on the request for annexation and rezoning of property located on Highway 362 near or at Grove <coughs> Road. Thank you. Um, Kathy Johnson at 275 Lenox Circle in Griffin. I oppose the building of Gresham Village. One reason being, I have an adult autistic child who will be the owner of my home one day. All of the madness the building of these apartments will bring will not be of any help to her. The traffic, the crimes, the crowding, etc., will drive her anxiety up by tenfold. Please do not approve the building of these apartments. And then also Haley McElroy at 604 Oak Grove Road in Griffin. I'm writing this regarding the build, the build of the affordable income apartments on Highway 362. I have been a longtime resident of the Oak Grove, Lenox, Petticoat, and Dunlap neighborhood. I've lived here my entire life, actually, even before it is what it is now. I'm concerned with several things regarding the build of this large apartment complex. My first concern is the traffic that will come with building it. There is already enough traffic through this area, not just our neighborhood. Highway 362 is a main road for residents of Pike County as well. The backup from the train when it comes through is more than enough, but some have already figured out they can cut through our neighborhood to make it out on the other side. Building a complex right next to that is only going to make matters worse. Secondly, we do not have the available room at the school that is zoned for our area. I'm sure you're all aware that in Griffin, parents have the opportunity to place their child or children in any other school as long as there's availability and they provide transportation. Do you know which schools have room and which ones do not? As a parent of a child currently enrolled at Moreland Road Elementary, I do. I received a letter with this information several weeks back. Did you know that Moreland Road is at its max capacity? Not saying that every person that would move in will have children, but I'm sure most will. Considering we are currently still dealing with COVID-19 and social distancing and all the other things that are associated with keeping safe, why would we want to add more children to a school that is having a hard time distancing the students it already has? My third concern is a possible increase in crime. Not saying that all criminals are going to flood these apartments or that we don't already have some amongst us, but why add to it? This area is a quiet, peaceful area and has been since I moved here as a young child. My next statement will be the last and hopes you understand why we as a neighborhood would like for you to reconsider the decision of the apartment complex. We all take pride in our homes in this neighborhood. If you take a drive through it, then you will witness that for yourself. My last concern is the devaluation of not only my property, but also my neighbors. Every single person works very hard for what we have. 
what's going to happen to the value of our homes when you build these apartments. Please think about what you're planning by adding the apartments and what it could do in the long run. Please put into thought the future instead of just the now. Thank you for your time. And that's it. Do we have anybody on Zoom or comment? Anybody else? Thank you all for sharing your information and your, and your opinion. Moving into public hearings, public hearings are conducted to allow public comments on specific advertised issues such as rezoning ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative actions to be considered by the commission. First item is to receive comments regarding a request for variance from John Shepard to allow outside storage in the PCB zoning district at 1113 Zebulon Road. Are we doing both at the same yes, time? Sir. And then item six, receive comments regarding a request for variance from John Shepard to allow outside storage in the PCB zoning district at 071 Road. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have before you are two uh, variance requests for adjacent properties. Uh, for the, uh, the applicant is applying uh, for a variance uh, at um, 1113 Zegelman Road. It's a total of uh, 3.1 acres, uh, and he operates a landscape supply business. Um, what he would like to do there in the rear portion of the property is to store his uh, landscape materials, uh, mulch, pine straw, rocks, things of that nature that obviously go along with that type of business. Uh, within PCD, however, it does not allow for outside storage uh, within that zoning district. So really, short of trying to rezone it to an industrial class or something along those lines, that really would not fit uh, with the rest of the zoning character of that area. This is really the only option. Uh, so staff is recommending a conditional approval of this request uh, uh, for both of the applications, both the uh, 21 variants uh, 01 and 02, uh, with the three following conditions. Uh, that unenclosed material uh, shall be located in the rear yard only. Two, a privacy fence shall be erected around the portion of the property enclosing all outside materials and or equipment. And finally, both properties shall be combined into one parcel. Um, if you want to have to answer any questions. Are there any questions, Mr. Jacobs? Hey, right. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody that would like to speak for or against or have any questions concerning this consideration of these two agenda items? Cora has a question, Mr. Jacobs. Uh, she says she'd like to know if there are restrictions about the type of fencing. Are there restrictions in regards to the type of fish fencing for the commissioner flowers? We have said to use a privacy fence again to create a visual barrier. Uh, there it is towards the rear of the property. Uh, it's county uh, adjacent to this. Uh, and there are some residential homes uh, to the rear. Uh, so we are asking that you know, that he use a privacy fence uh, around that portion where these materials will be. She says thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. <clears throat> Moving into the consent agenda, we have items 7 through 12. Do we have a motion to take off? Item 7 through 12 has one. Mrs. Murray for the motion. We have a second. That Mr. Tinsley. Mm -hmm. yep. The motion is second. Um, any discussion? All in favor, signal by raising your hand if you're here or say aye if you're present or away. Aye. aye. It was seven zero. Moving to the regular agenda. 13. Consider the minutes of the Griffin Board of Commissioners workshop meeting on March 23, 21. I'm not sure who was missing from that. Mr. Murray was missing. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from workshop? So moved. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Mrs. Ward with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand here or say aye. Away. Aye. We have a six zero one with Ms. Murray abstaining. Item 14, consider a variance request from John Shepard to allow outside storage in the PCBD zoning district at 1113 Zebulon Road with the three conditions that um, conditional approval that staff recommended. We're going to take 14 and 15 together. We could take 14 and 15 together. It'd be fine. So motion to accept 14 and 15 with three conditions recommended by staff. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Do we have a second? Second. 
Mr. Tenson with a second. Any more questions or comments? All in favor, please signal or raise your hand if you're here or say aye if you're away. Aye. Aye. Seven zero on items 14 and 15. You board? Good, seven zero. Item 16, consider a memorandum of understanding among the City of Griffin, the Spalding County Collaborative Authority for Families and Children, and Griffin Spalding County School System for the first responder mentorship program. Tinsley with a motion, Ms. Ward with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand or saying aye. Aye. Hold on one second. One two. Read that again. Cora wants to know how the kids are chosen for the mentorship program. Mr. Bowers wants to know about how the kids are selected for the mentorship program. They're chosen by the collaborative, the school system are pairing together to pick children that will be a good fit for our responders. I have another question also. Sure. Sorry, are these, um, what are the age, or is it elementary, or is this a we're, we're gonna start with middle school. Uh, and we're at Kennedy Road Middle School will be our first school. We're trying, we're doing a pilot school to start with to see how this starts and make sure we work out all the bugs. And then next year, in the following years, we have to expand. Ms. Flowers, you have any other questions? Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I just want to, the reason I asked about that is I think it's a great program. Um, I just know how important minority representation is. Um, for kids to understand that these are opportunities that they could have for themselves in the future. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're capitalizing on that. But other than that, I don't have any questions. I think it's great. Absolutely. We have a very diverse group that uh, is volunteered for Griffin Fire. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Right. We have a motion by Mr. Tinsley, second by Ms. Ward. All in <laughs> favor, please signal by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Grade seven zero. You're on my blind side. <laughs> Item 17, consider a contract with American Traffic Solutions doing business as Vera Mobility for the installation of two school zone safety cameras for automated speed enforcement in areas adjacent to Crescent Elementary and Griffin High School. And the police chief is here to address in my understanding, talking to the chief, this is going to be on Poplar, would be on Poplar Street and on Crescent. Is that correct? That's correct. Are there any? I make a motion to approve. That was quick. Got a motion by Mr. McCord to approve. Do we have a I did have a question. Um, Mr. Citizen saw this and asked him, is it just for speed or is it security or what, what can you see and then worry about those uh, camera systems are designed primarily just for speed and traffic enforcement and you know we anticipate their installation slowing the traffic down considerably we run a couple of pilot programs already to determine the feasibility of it tracking uh, we look at one three-day period we have over had over 1200 violations of people going over the speed limit and it varied from just a little over to quite a bit so the main reason that we wanted to proceed in this direction was to reduce the amount of law enforcement manpower that we're having to send to that area every day to help deal with the traffic stuff and of course increase the safety with slowing folks down as they go through those areas. Are they in, um, or the position of them, are they near or close or in the school zones or outside the school zones? We'll have to determine the exact location of them once we get some engineering done, but it'll be primarily within that designated zone, uh, what's already designated as a school zone. I think there's a thousand foot buffer in each direction. So we'll try to find the, the prime location for that, both for the deterrent effect and the uh, enforcement effect. And is this paid for, is there any joint help with the school system? Or is it no, um, the only partnership we have with the school system on it is the way that uh, state law is currently structured. It requires the school system to actually be the applicant for the permit to do them through the uh, Department of Transportation. There's legislation in play right now that will change that where we'll be the, per the entity that applies for it, but it hasn't been approved yet that, that I'm aware of. Um, it will, it's, it's pretty much on us. It's a no cost. 
issue to the city because the, the fees and the payments to pay for the program are derived from the, the fines generated by the violators. We'll, when we put them into play, part of that is to have a basically a warning period of 30 days or so where we will send people notices of violation, but it won't be a it won't be a ticket per se. So we're going to give folks a chance to, to learn or there, try to slow them down there. Were these chosen because that's the areas of the most is complaints or calls, or can we expand to other schools? <coughs> Crescent is probably where we get the most complaints, and there are times throughout the year that I have to send two police officers down there for an hour or more every day to try to deal with the, the traffic congestion and people going around, you know, folks trying to pick up their kids. Um, the Griffin High location, we just look at traffic flow and things of that nature. Um, if the program's successful, we might want to look look at doing a few more. So, but we want to start out small because there's a good bit of labor involved on our end of it. So I've combed through it and I think we can handle it. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks for the question, for the answers. Thank you. So we have a motion from Mr. McCord. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mrs. Murray with a second. I've got one more, a couple more questions right quick, Chief. Um, in regards to the fee, I remember when we did the camera, the red light camera, there was no points assigned or anything to anybody that got a ticket. There won't be any points assigned to it. Um, it's basically a $75-ish fee for each violation. 25 of that goes to the provider to cover their costs and mail outs and things of that nature. 50 of it will go to the city for our, our part of it. Um, it's a civil action, much like a red light camera, as opposed to traffic, uh, a, a true traffic ticket. So my understanding is there won't be points assigned, but failure to pay will result in us sending information in to have people's license suspended if they don't pay. And then in regards to the, um, is there a cat, like a five miles over, 10 mile over? Or we have to have some over? latitude to set that. Um, generally speaking, the use of the radar and speed detection requires 10 miles per hour over to uh, take an enforcement action. So I don't see that that would be any different with automated enforcement. And if someone gets more than one or two or multiple tickets, they start, start getting expensive. Do, but do they start, <laughs> is there an increase in scale as you get more or is it just the same 75 whatever dollar? I believe there's a, there's a scale for uh, repeat violators, I have to. I, I don't have it in front of me. I'd have to tell you exactly uh, by looking at that. But it's based on the study that we did. It's pretty significant uh, the amount of fines and forfeitures that are out there. But uh, I'm reluctant to give a figure on that because we can't. Our desire is to change people's behavior, not necessarily generate money. Say that and again, I can't, please, sir. Say that, please. Say that again. Our desire is to change people's behavior and get them to slow down, not to sit there and generate That's tickets. That's one of those little signs that says, please slow down. Right. Down basically another street to If we adhere to that, we wouldn't need this. Right. That, and when we were trying to figure out, trying to project cost and value and all that, I can't predict how much people's behavior will change. That's, that's why I'm reluctant to give a hard number to people. Put it into play and see how it goes. Any other questions or comments from board? I no? think I do have one more question because I know I've, I've got a citizen that was, did, will ask me this. The hours of operation, if you already answered this, I'm sorry, but the school zone is from a certain time until four. Are these cameras, because they're just for school, is it? It's just, with this, it's just it. for that purpose. Just for that purpose. So after mm -hmm. six o'clock, nine o'clock on Saturday, we're not concerned about Correct. There is still some usefulness of them. It just there won't be issuing citations during those time periods. But the usefulness is we can go back and pull information out of the archives. So if, if we're looking for an armed robbery suspect or something and we know what to search for, it does retain that information, much like the license plate recognition technology that we already have deployed. And this will use the license plate technology? No, LPR will not be integrated with this. There is an option in the future if we choose to do that. So we might want to do that in the future. It's basically, we have to go, and they'll do so many of them each month for free for us if we want to go back and pull, it could be an accident. It could be a suspect in the internet, it could be anything. 
So that's archived and we can go back and pull that kind of information, but that's really not the primary purpose of, of what we're doing with this is to change that bad driving behavior, make those areas safer, and hopefully limit some of the manpower that we're having to commit to this every day. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand or say aye. 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 Seven zero. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, hard work. Item 18, consider amending the City of Griffin fiscal year 2020-2021 operating and capital budget for the compensation asset fund in the amount of $50,000 as part of routine financial bookkeeping. I make a motion to approve. Mr. McCord with a motion. Mrs. Ward with a second. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Seven zero. Item 19, consider a contract with the City of Griffin and Synergy Security Services LLC, best and most responsive bidder in the amount of $60,346 per year to provide armed security for customer service at City Hall. Pleasure of the board. Mrs. Um, Murray with a motion. Do have a second? Second from Ms. Ward. All in favor of the contract, please signal by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Seven, zero. Item 20, consider a contract with Helix Group Inc. Low bidder for the construction of lift station number six in the amount of $214,114.02 for the Watershed Management Department, Director of Watershed Management, Brad Keller's here to address. Mrs. Ward with a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Tenzin with a second. All in favor, signal by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Seven zero. Thank you, Dr. Keller. Item 21, consider the purchase of two AAON units for one ribbon center in the amount of $133,265 from Wright Brothers, single source to furnish, remove, and replace two existing units at one ribbon center. Motion to approve. Mrs. Murray with a motion. Mrs. Ward with a second. And Chris, these are different units than the ones that we re redid. Um, we did the these are fresh air units for the, for the building. They provide fresh air. But we had changed out the whole HVAC system. That's, that's the AC system. These work in conjunction with that. They're, they bring fresh air. That's specifically. Who else bids on these jobs? Anybody else bid on? Well, this this particular one, Wright Brothers, is our contractor who we use for all. Work. We have pretty much have somebody that we can could depend on a call. That's the contract we've been using. Do have a motion a second? Any other questions? All in favor, signal by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Seven zero. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Item 22, consider work contract for IMMEC Inc. Sole source for repair work identified during structural assessment of one Griffin Center parking facility in the amount of 585000 for the Public Works Department, like for Public Works Department, Chris Walker's address. And it's my understanding that the funds from this is coming from SPLOS dollars that we have. It is transportation. Right. Are you the one or not? Me? Parking deck. I don't feel like one. Chris, will the parking deck, of course, be... This is, this is back from our study that we had done. This is part of that. This is the actual work portion of it. Um, this is going to get us back where we need to be for safety. How many months will it be, I mean, not of use or do we know? Uh, I haven't got a time frame. They'll give me, they'll give me that uh, when they start the project. They'll give me a time frame. They'll give me dates and we'll have target dates. Do we have a motion to approve? Yes, we do. So moved. Mr. Tenzin with a motion. We have a second. Mrs. Ward with a second. Any other questions? All in favor, signal by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 There they are. <laughs> Seven zero, thank you. Moving into the city manager's report, the city manager will update us. Congratulations. Thank you. you made it a little week. Well, it's been two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Um, just first, I wanted to also congratulate Faith on her award. That's a pretty big deal to be here six months and receive that kind of um, recognition from not only your boss, but also your peers that have to vote on that. 
Uh, secondly, a huge thank you to the linemen. They are always out there whenever we need them. There's never a question as to what they will or won't do, but also a huge thank you to you as the board for um, supporting the pay increase that they needed in order to get those positions filled. We are have some applications in that should be starting soon. So we're very excited about that as well as the fact that you were willing to prioritize that when you did. Um, we need some direction from the last workshop on our nuisance uh, discussion. I haven't heard from anybody specifically in that regard, so I needed to know if we need to put it back on the agenda to discuss in April, or you want to think about it some more, exactly how you want to proceed with that. I think it's kind of a briefing in April, and maybe if you've got some pointed questions, direction that you might want to send out to each of us or to a group to kind of give us a foundation to build our opinion on it. Okay, so I have a question regarding the workshop. I know I wasn't physically there, but you all knew I called in and was there, right? Okay, so I just wanted to be able to nod my head. Yes, I agree with that. I know I wasn't here physically, but I was there by phone and I agree. Okay. So we'll put that back on the agenda then for the workshop in yes. April, which is a little bit busy because we may hopefully also be discussing t -SLOS. I think you all saw that email from last week that the county did approve um, moving forward with t -SLOS in November. I was hoping to have dates from them by now and I asked Mr. Wilson this morning, but do not have any dates for a joint meeting between us, Orchard Hill, Sunnyside, and the county. So as soon as I get some direction there, we need to get together to discuss that IGA and we have quite the tight time frame. So I'll be looking for some dates from you all, I hope very shortly. Uh, monthly reports, you should have gotten those today. We have changed them a little bit. We felt like as directors that there was some information in there that wasn't really needed for you all. And we've also learned that since we changed to a different type of crime information database, the zones that are listed on your monthly reports really aren't the zones anymore. So what we'd like to do is use a heat map instead. If you all are okay with that, I think that would actually give you a better picture of what's occurring throughout the city than just zones that really don't make any sense. So is everybody okay with that as well? Yes. And then lastly, I need to know if you want to proceed with fireworks on July 4th. Yes. 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 Okay. And we'll send that request to the GSBTA. We can. And uh, I think we should, us and the county should send a financial request. We can do that. And that. Mr. Wilson did also say he would ask his board at their April 19th meeting next week. So I'll let him know that y'all are in consensus about that. That's it. Thank you. Great, great work. Mr. Whalen, welcome, sir. Thank you. Since your last meeting, the Georgia General Assembly did adjourn on March 31st, which is great news. You go home and let your wife and your children and pets out again, that we say. But uh, seriously, they didn't do a whole lot for us this year. The one issue that we had talked about previously dealing with the uh, upcoming reapportionment of election districts, language was included and is now Senate Bill 202, which got signed by the governor a couple of weeks ago. It's been the subject of a lot of controversy, as y'all know, watching the news media. There are, I think, five lawsuits pending trying to challenge the constitutionality of that bill, and it depends on what a judge winds up doing with those lawsuits. They could strike the entire legislation which would take out the language that cities were looking for concerning reapportionment. So at this point, we're still pretty much up in the air, and we don't know when, if not any further word, on when the census might be delivered to us. So that's kind of where we are. And I'm assuming GMA is working through the process to... They're doing the best they can under the circumstances. I think. That's what answer this. Any questions of Mr. Whalen? So as a city, we just keep doing normal business until we hear otherwise. That's what that tells me, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and do we still... In regards to the well, it's the notices of elections and all that. We will have elections this November, it's November second, I believe it is, and qualifying to begin in August, and you would qualify for most likely from your current districts. I think the census probably will be published sometime after that, probably September, late September. Is what we kind of look. Probably reapportioned before your next 
general municipal election, which would be in 2023. Thank you, Mr. Whalen. Mr. McCord. Mr. McCord. No comments, no comments, no comments, no comments. Thank you, sir. Ms. Flowers. No comment. Thank you. Mrs. Murray. Bill, thank you citizens for coming. See some new faces here. Thank you for the information that you brought. And uh, good to see everyone. It's always good to have a group of people to talk to. And Jessica, congratulations on your first, I guess, meeting that you facilitate the whole thing. So it's uh, good for you, you did a great job. Um, again, Mr. Jacobs, if you're still here, thank you. Cause a lot of hard work, it seems like every meeting now you get, you get a lot of stuff to come forward and bring to us and help us understand and take questions. And I appreciate that. So anyway, thanks again, board, everyone. No further comment. Mrs. Ward. Mr. Tinsley. No. Mr. Brock. 100% I pledge to help you to, to the next, next two and a half years I'll be on. I'm going to be here, I'm going to be for you, and I'm looking forward to great things with your brain. Wonderful. So two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to uh, witness the science fair, um, the STEM project, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics at Atkinson Road Elementary School. And the fifth graders did virtual presentations about how to create a smart city. So each um, student basically did a visual presentation with design graphics and CADs and all this other stuff. But it was, what was so amazing was that I'd say 85 to 90 percent of all the students talked about litter and trash and came up with ideas of how they could end up designing different technological things, whether it was vacuums, whether it was doing um, camera, um, you know, using cameras, security, and, um, and there was just this, this to imagine fifth graders were, were so in tune of issues that we deal with every day. I talked to them about Mr. Ennis coming out and talking to them because that was where their focus was. And, and so, um, as I mentioned, Dr. Real is looking at wanting to uh, do adopt a stream or adopt a neighborhood. So she's going to hook up with environmental council. But uh, just to hear those kids and, and see their presentation was quite spectacular. And so our school system is developing our future leaders and our future folks that will be um, working and coming up with ideas to make our hometown the best place to live, work, and play. To all those that came tonight, thank you so much for your time and energy. It is always a pleasure. And um, with that being said, there's a motion to adjourn. So I make a motion to adjourn. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Mr. Brock with a second. I think the Wi-Fi was a little slow for you, Mr. McCord. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Chris.